Hey guys, welcome to Slash Dot Dash Dot. It is June, and that can only mean one thing: Glastonbury. And with that in mind, we're going to count down my top five shows at Glastonbury Festival over the years. Now, I've been a lucky boy. I've managed to go to every Glastonbury since 2005. So in that time, I've seen hundreds of acts. So please bear that in mind whilst I'm counting these down. Um, something that you may have seen uh, in 2008, say, you might think is better than what I've listed. But obviously, this is all subjective. If you do disagree with me or if you've got any that you'd like to throw out there, let me know in the comments below. I'll be keen to check out what other people say. But these are my personal top five over the last 12 years. Okay, starting off, we're going all the way back to 2009 and the Friday Night at Pyramid headliner was, of course, the legendary Neil Young. Now, my dad always told me that Neil Young was a legend and he used to play him quite often. And when I was a lot younger, I sort of thought, nah, it's not for me. A bit countryfied, wasn't it? A bit, yeah, wasn't too keen on it. But actually, when I uh, got to... Uh, 2009 I was an 18 year old and I started listening to music a lot more in that sort of space of time and bloody hell Neil Young's good I, I was just totally gripped by it at that point in my life and uh, getting to see him down at the pyramid stage he absolutely rocked out he played so many classics and, uh, and then he ended with a, a 15 minute rendition of Rocking in the Free World which um, <laughs> Kind of divided some people, some people loved it. I thought it was great, but he could have done some other songs maybe during that time. Yeah, true legend, and I got to see him down at Glastonbury on the Pyramid stage, and it's one of the nights that will forever sort of stick in my head uh, when thinking about the festival. Okay, number four would be the Chemical Brothers in 2011 on the other stage. Now, we camp in the other stage field, and uh, we've seen many things there over the years, just sat by, possibly just watching, you know, if something's not on, anywhere that we particularly want to see we'll sit by the other stage but you can guarantee that the other stage is going to have one big dance act that we're quite into me and my friends this is that i'm talking about and at 2011 my whole group wanted to go see the chemical brothers it was fantastic we got glow sticks we all put face paints on and we went down and got in a great position down in front of the other stage and it was one of my favorite sets that's why it's at number four uh, it was fantastic. Just being there with your friends to enjoy all of the Chemical Brothers classics. It was a true rip-roaring, an hour and a half of uh, dance classics. Number three would be going back all the way to the first year that I went to Glastonbury in 2005. So 14-year-old me, think about this, 14-year-old me, little baby face me. I got to see my favourite band ever on my first day of live music. That's right. The first day of live music that I ever experienced was Glastonbury 2005. Uh, it was the Friday and I got to see The Undertones, I got to see The Zootons, who I'm quite a big fan of as well. But, as you can see over here, the White Stripes are my number one band. And you can see I've got the tattoos. And I got to see them on my first day and it was great. Like, I hadn't really got into them that much at that point. Like, they were my favourite band. But I only had like two or three albums. But after I saw that set at Glastonbury on the Pyramid stage, I went out and got every single thing that they ever released. I've got singles, I've got like bootlegs, I've got all sorts now because of that night. And that night was the night that made me want to play guitar. Seeing Jack White absolutely tearing it up on the Pyramid stage made me want to play guitar. And, uh, and that's what I did. I'm not very good, but... I went and did it because of seeing the White Stripes. In a way, I was kind of spoilt getting to see my favourite band on, on my first day of live music, but I actually only ever got to see them twice, so it was a good job that my dad took me to that Glastonbury. And, uh, yeah, that's going to go with me all the way to my deathbed. What a moment that was for me. I got so excited. Now, you might think, why isn't that number one? And uh, I've got two really good reasons why not coming up. Okay, number two, 2013 possibly the biggest headliner that they've had at the festival since I've been going. The Rolling Stones came to town. Oh my god. I've never experienced a crowd so hyped for something for such a long time. Like You get to go to Glastonbury on the Wednesday and there's technically no music. I mean there is music but 
There's no uh, the big stages out on until like Friday. Main focal point of the weekend was the Rolling Stones. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was hyped for it. And uh, you couldn't get anywhere near. I mean, we went down fairly early for the set. And we were way back in the field. But it was okay. It was still an amazing experience to hear Jumping Jack Flash. To hear Give Me Shelter. To hear Sympathy for the Devil. To hear Satisfaction. Just all those classic rock tunes that we all know. Like, everybody knows Satisfaction. I don't know a single person that doesn't know that song. And considering the lads are like granddads now, they're, you know, they're kicking on, they're way up, I think they're in the 70s, right? Definitely late 60s, early 70s. They had the energy, I've never seen anything like it. Mick Jagger was still like rocking out, he was just jumping up and down, running around the stage. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they did it, I don't know how they do it at that age, but it was fantastic and... Again, it was another night where everyone went to see the same thing. So I was with all my friends and we were all just absolutely loving it. Okay, my number one set at Glastonbury is Orbital 2010. Now, Orbital are my favourite electronic band ever. As you can see, I'm donning their t-shirt from that year, actually. This is when I got that t-shirt, was at Glastonbury. They'd just come back from their... Um, they'd sort of retired and they'd come back and they got to headline the other stage. And they went up against Stevie Wonder, who I also would have loved to have seen. I'd missed out on them during their first run, and I had to go and watch them, and I'm so glad I did. It was 2010, it was the year when Glastonbury was a dust bowl. It was so hot. I think it got up to like 32 degrees during that festival. And um, everyone had gone to see Stevie Wonder, and there was like 2,000 maybe, I'm not sure what the number was, but there was it was a very small crowd at the other stage for Orbital, but it was all absolute die-hard fans of the band, and it was just such a special moment. They played an absolute classic set, they dropped in a couple of new ones that they'd, uh, they'd recently brought out, and it was just the best fun I've ever had. I was there on my own because no one else wanted to come and watch, but the people around me were such hardcore Orbital fans, and it was just one of those um, shows that you're in, and you know it's something special. I've got to admit, I got fairly drunk that night, and uh, <laughs> I did a lot of dancing in the other stage field. But it was just so good. You were there with like-minded people, and the lads from Orbital, they just absolutely smashed it out of the park that night. They've come back again for a second run after retiring for a second time, and they're not on this year, but hopefully they're going to be on again soon, because um, Orbital and Glastonbury kind of go hand in hand. It's sort of what made them into the uh, the massive electronic band that they were in 1994 and for them to come back hopefully in the 50th year would be special but this night I don't think can be topped for me um, it was just such a good uh, just a good show the light show was amazing and you just felt part of something really special I'd be interested to know if there was anyone else there because it was a small crowd and that actually really added to it for me actually having it be a smaller crowd um, and just die-hard fans, I think, really added to that one being such a special show. So that is my top show that I've ever seen at Glastonbury. We'll see if anything can top it this year for me. Um, to be honest, I'm a little bit not disappointed with the lineup, but it's not as um, heavy with bands that I like this year. Certainly, a couple of top picks for me going into this year would be Chic. Who I missed the other year. Apparently that was an amazing uh, show at the West Holt stage. Um, Justice. I'm finally going to get to see Justice. I've been waiting to see them for like ten years now. So that should that could move into this list. We will see. I might have to revisit this next year. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know your top five uh, shows that you've ever seen at Glastonbury. If you've been lucky enough to go down to the festival. Uh, let me know what you think about this list and make sure to subscribe because as I've said we're going to be doing more music uh, related videos in the coming months because uh, obviously I'm going to Glastonbury and I want to get some footage down there uh, I'm going to Beautiful Days that's confirmed now so I'll be getting some stuff for that festival as well and of course we've got all the other entertainment stuff on the channel I've got my video game uh, videos we're going to have some movie stuff hopefully soon and yeah, maybe some TV stuff. So make sure you subscribe for more. 
and uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys.